For today's Godot for RPG series, we're going to implement the player. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do before we do anything in this game is go to Project, Project Settings, and then under Textures, under Default Texture Filter, we'll want to select the nearest uh, setting. That way all pixel art will become high quality and will not become low resolution. What we're going to want to do next is create our world. We'll do so by making a note 2D. Just name it to world. And we'll also want to drag in an icon so we have a reference model to make sure that our player is moving. Save the scene as world. Then run the scene in order to select the current. Now we're going to actually make the player. And to do so, we'll want to create a character body to the instead of a kinematic body. We'll add a collision shape, animation player, animation tree, and we'll also add a sprite. What I'm going to do next is create a new folder for a player. It will also create a new folder for our art. And down here, I will put the art files for our player. Next, we'll want to drag the art from our folder here into the sprite. And as you can see, uh, we have all the animations here. What we want to do is set our frames. Currently, this one has 58 frames. And then we will go under animation tree and select our animation player. We'll want to remove our ready function because we will not be using it. And we will want to create some on ready variables. Godot 4 uses at on ready var and at export for any uh, type of variable that is specified as such. To quickly interject, the reason why I'm specifying uh, the variable types is for performance. So if you have a lower end computer, this will greatly improve your performance for your uh, program as the computer does not have to guess what type of variable it is. All you have to do is do the semicolon followed by the type and then equals to. Next, what we're going to want to do is change this to a physics process. That way we can process uh, the inputs much better than just a normal process. This is a simplified version of getting inputs from uh, the player, but you can also do an array or use the vector function in order to uh, get the inputs from the player. Next, we'll want to create a specification for our velocity variable. We'll simply just use the input vector and multiply it by our speed. The next upcoming part is going to be important to understand if you want to add more animations, though I will add new animations such as attack animations as well. But you're going to want to make sure that if you have an animation that doesn't even uh, particularly move the player, you'll want to be sure that all the blend positions, which I will explain in future part of the video, uh, are being done when the vector is uh, not at zero.
Finally, our most important part of this is to initiate our move and slide function. These arrows, oh, make sure to indent properly. You will get errors if you try to run this code, but we will uh, add our animations next. This next part will just be initializing and setting our animations. All right. We're now gonna go over to our animation player. And what we'll do here is create a new blend space 2d and we'll call this idle it works slightly different compared to Godot. Uh, be sure to make sure that this is set to enabled instead of auto otherwise your character will glitch and these animations will not work we'll also do run here and then set our animations for idle and run to transition back and forth to each other but we'll go under advanced and click uh, our mode to set to enabled we will not connect to end yet but we may in future videos here you want to click the corners that are specified of what uh, the animation is going to go to this next part generally confuses people, so I would advise to pay attention. Uh, the up part here will do uh, idle up because if it is uh, going up, it means the character is looking away. But if we're going down, then that means the character is looking at you. And then the left and right are still the same. And we'll apply the same thing to our run animation. Next, we're going to go over to our collision shape and just create a circle. Be sure it's a circle uh, as that way if we add Y sorting in the future, your character can go around objects and also appear as if they can hide behind or in front of them. So we'll save, go to our world, and then we'll instant our uh, player here. Almost forgot to mention though was we need to add a camera. And be sure to have the zoom close. I put it at half just to make sure that we can see our character. And for our smoothing options, we'll do enabled for both and we'll set each option speed to four. Before we start testing our game though, we'll also want to add our inputs. And it's a little bit different in Godot. So you just type uh, the character here, but you also have a list of the characters that you can implement. Set your uh, animation tree to active before you start playing as well. Now that we're in the game, you can see that our player moves and it has a slight drag in its camera, which is good because it makes it uh, smooth better. And you can see with a reference here that our character is moving. Thank you for watching. All files will be available in the GitHub down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Now we're going to set our attack animations. Now what we'll want to do to set up is uh, add a marker to the, which looks like this, and then we'll add an area to the, and then we'll add a collision shape. Rename this to sword hitbox and make sure that you select 
a shape that corresponds well with your attack animation. In this case, we'll be using a uh, capsule here. Now the reasoning behind using a marker 2D is to make sure that we have a way to rotate our uh, sword hitbox without having to manually change it. sword uh, hitbox's collision shape and you want to select the disabled option for the beginning animation but the moment that the uh, attack animation happens you have the animation enable the uh, collision box then down here we will disable it once the animation is over Next, if your uh, attack animation is at a different position, what you'll want to do is go under transform of the marker to the and click on rotation and select your rotation here. This will allow you to add uh, different positions for your uh, attack box without needing to change anything. Next, we will go to our animation tree and we will add a new blend space 2D. This one will be called attack. Attack one, I should say, because in future videos, we will be adding combos in different attack patterns. And as such, as previously mentioned, you will just add uh, the different positions of our attack animations. Next, we will then connect our animations. Now, the way we'll do this is by connecting to both the idle and also our run back and forth. Reasoning being is if our player is running, but they want to attack, they're also able to do that. Otherwise, you will not be able to attack unless you are completely idle. Before we implement anything into our code, we'll also want to add a button for attack. And we will press F or any button that you would like to use for attack and then we'll close. Next, we'll go back to our code and then we will implement in our animation tree a set function for parameters. Attack 1. Be sure to imp implement the 1 and then blend position. Next, we will add a Boolean, which is is attacking, which is equal to false. And we will set this uh, Boolean to check if is attacking is equal to false. Reasoning being is that way our player cannot move while we attack.
Now we will go back and we will implement the final part of the code, which is the attack part. So we will do if input dot is action just pressed attack set attacking equal to true and then we will do the animation Before we test, be sure this is attack one and also our move and slide function is under uh, the boolean here. Now that we boot it up, we can walk around, but when we move and then we attack, we can no longer move and we are in an attack animation. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And this helps with uh, any making any games in Godot 4. And I'll see you guys in the next YouTube series.